Hey guys, welcome to Code Decode. Today in this video, we are going to see what is double checked locking of singleton class. What is a singleton class? How to create it? How to prevent the breaking of singleton class? What are ways to break it? Every possible interview questions around the singleton classes. So let's get started. Please like, share and subscribe to support us. And we are setting a like target of 500 likes. So initially we have already covered in the previous video what is singleton class and which scenario it will break. So we will quickly go ahead and implement a singleton class keeping three things in mind. Firstly, create a private static singleton instance. Secondly, if the instance is private, how will you access it? To access this private instance, you need a method which will return you the instance of the same object. Check whether it is null. If it is null, then create a new object with new keyword else return the same object so that you get only single instance everywhere in the whole program. So singleton is have a single instance all over the application and not to create a new one. And third and very important part to create a private constructor so that nobody can create your instance with a new keyword. So let's go ahead and implement it. I'll create a new class named a singleton. Let's implement the three points. First point is to have a private static instance of the same class. Private static instance of the same class. I'll name the instances as instance only. Secondly, I have to create its constructor private so that nobody can create with a new keyword. If they create a new keyword instance with a new keyword, then you will have different instances of the same class at different places. So singleton constructor must be private. Secondly, now if the constructor is private, if your instance is private, how will anybody free create even a single instance of your class? So for that, to access an instance of this class, you need a method. That will be a public method, which will return you a singleton object, get instance say, and it will check if your instance is null. Only in that case, it will create a new object. It will assign it to the with a new keyword. Else, if the instance is not null, return the same instance. So this is how we have implemented our singleton class. Just by keeping three things in mind. Create a private variable create a private constructor and create a public method which will return the instance of the same class and but it will check whether if it is null if it is null don't, then only create a new variable else return the same now to check whether this is purely truly singleton you should make sure that the hash code of the object being printed by this method or returned by this method is same so let's quickly go and create a new class which is main class for us we'll create a main method here and let's create singleton instance. Now you cannot create with a new one. Why? It says change the visibility of singleton to package. Because we have created it private, it is not able to access the constructor. If you change it, it will become the default package or the public one. And then you can easily create an object with this. But it will break our singleton pattern. So let's not do that. Let's comment it as of now. And let's try to get the instance from the get instance method that we have created. The get instance method must be public static so that we can call it without the object get instance and then print the instance one's hash code. Similarly, create second instance also and print its hash code also. You can see this hash code of both the objects are same. This proves that this particular method will always give you single instance when all, when called multiple times. This is the opposite case when you have created with a new keyword. So if, if let's remove this private, let's ask them to create with a new singleton constructor every time. And now let's try to print it. It shows you a different hash code. That means if you do it with a new keyword, you will always get a unique object with a different hash code. So instance one is not equals to instance two. They are two different instances in all possible ways. But if you use this method by not using the new keyword, but if you use this particular way, the get instance that we have created, keeping the constructor private, then you get a pure singleton instance with the same hash code always. So that's how we have implemented the singleton one. By looking at this line of code, this 15 or 16 lines of code, can you see any possibility that it can be broken? Is there any possibility that this singleton instance 
might have the different hash codes like we had in with the new keyword with using the constructor. So yes, there is a chance, there is one scenario where the singleton creation that you have done will break. And that scenario is in multi-threaded end moment. The above code will create multiple instances of singleton class, which will break your singleton concept altogether if called by one or more thread in parallel, known as in multi-threading environment. So now consider a situation that two threads are working upon your singleton class. They both are trying to create an instance. The get instance is called. It checks the two thread is simultaneously at line number 10. They check if instance is null. So for the first time, both of the thread T1 and T2 sees, okay, my instance is null. So they both go inside this and creates a new singleton object. In that scenario, you will have two different singleton objects with different hash codes. Because at the same time, if true thread simultaneously checks the line number 10, that is instance is null, they both will find it null. Then they both will create a new instance. Though this is a border and edge case scenario, but this is a scenario. When two thread simultaneously checks when the instance is null, then they both will create a new instance and your singleton will break. So now this is a problem. So what is the solution to prevent the breaking of this particular get instance method scenario? If this is causing problem, let's make it synchronized. If this is the case, we've made this method synchronized. Then when two threads, T1 and T2, try to access this method instance, get instance method, only one thread can check if instance is null. If instance is null, only one thread T1 can create a new singleton. And by the whole time it is doing its task, T2 will wait. But don't you think this is performance being getting impacted by making the whole method Synchronized in the thread, multi-threaded environment, we have seen we should only make the synchronization for those line of code which are creating a problem. So from line number 9 to line number 14, which code is creating problem when simultaneously being accessed by two threads? So line number 10 is the line which is causing problem when accessed by two threads simultaneously. So T1 and T2 checks if both are null. It will both create the new instance, which is a problem. So only these line of code is a problem. So why to synchronize whole method? This is a performance impact, right? So one primary solution is to make the get instance method synchronized. Though it is thread safe and it solves your multiple instance issues. Yes, it too. But it is not very efficient. Why? Because you need to bear the cost of synchronization every time your call to this method goes. So, okay, fine. First time. Your thread T1 and T2 is trying to access it. So T1 will wait and check whether instance is null. Yes, it is null. It will create a new instance by the time T2 will wait. Now third time T3, T4, everybody will come and try to create an instance. But only at the application start, T1 has already created a new instance. So every time T4, T5, T6 will always never get your instances null. But still your T3, T4, T5, T6 all have to go into this method one by one because it is synchronized. Though for all of them, they will have the, this particular condition failing. Simultaneously, T3, T4 and T5 cannot access this method, though they are not going to touch your critical section at any cost. So if this is not going to be touched and still you are making it synchronized, it is a performance impact. And hence... You need to bear the cost of synchronization every time you call this method while synchronization is needed only on the first time. The first time when your application starts and your first thread creates the new instance with a new keyword. After that, none of the thread will be able to bypass this because the instance is already created in memory and they will directly run the line number 13. Still, every time, because you have made it synchronized, every time all the threads have to go one by one in this method and the whole impact will be on the performance. So this brings us to the double check locking pattern where only critical section is locked. Let me first implement, the, the, implement this double checking for you. In this if condition, we will synchronize only the critical section. And how to do that? With a block. So we are not synchronizing a method. We are synchronizing a block of code. Now only in that particular code, code block, we are going to again check whether it is null. If it is null, then only instantiate it with the new keyword and not here. This particular critical section is now not in a method, but in a, in a code block, the synchronized code block. Let me dry run this for you. At first instance, T1 and T2 simultaneously get to this method, get instance. 
it goes to line number 10 and see if the instance is null. So, T1 and T2 at the start of your application will get instances null. So, T1 and T2 will go to line number 11 simultaneously. But only one thread out of T1 and T2 can get into the line number 12 and check whether it is null. If it is null, it will create an instance and then leave the code block, synchronize block. And then the second thread can get into the code block and see, oh, okay, now it is not null. I can happily go out of the synchronized block. I will happily ignore this if condition and I'll return the existing instance that was created by thread T1. So, this is how you have moved your whole method which was synchronized to just one synchronized block, keeping only critical section in that particular synchronized block. Now, why is it called double checking? Because if you can see, we have the code redundancy. If instance equals to null, if instance equals to null. So, this is double checking. First time it checks, oh, there can be a case multiple threads are checking it. But only one instance is able to create a new instance because of this synchronized block. Only one thread is allowed to get into this. Again, check whether it is really null. If it is really null, create a new instance. If it is not null, then happily go out of the synchronized block and return the instance. Now, what was the advantage? Initially, when you have made the whole method synchronized, after the first time T1 has created your instances, the fourth, fifth time when T3, T4, T5 comes, they also have to go one by one and check whether it is null. For sure, it is not going to be null. So, anyways, they have to return the same instance. So, now with removing the synchronization on the method level, now T3, T4, T5 simultaneously can check the line number 10, whether instance is null. They will say, no, it is not null. They all will return the same instance. And hence, no critical section is touched by two or three threads simultaneously. So, that is the advantage of double checking locking pattern in singleton. So, here it is called double checking locking because there are two checks for instance equals to null. There are two checks for instance equals to null. One without locking and one with locking. One without locking will make sure multiple threads can access it and one with locking will make sure only one instance can create an instance of singleton class. So, here the intention is to reduce the synchronization cost and improve the performance by only locking the critical section. The code which creates the instance of a singleton class. The critical section was to check it and create an instance. This was critical section. Only that uh, two line of code block is written in the synchronized code block. Now, the first time goes into the synchronized block, rest of the all calls, the code is not synchronized and hence performance is increased in this implementation. I have already told you, the first time instance is created, next time three simultaneously threads comes, none of, the, none of them has to wait one by one to get into this method. They all can check whether thread instance is null. They will say instance is not null. They all will return the same instance, this 76cc D017 simultaneously without any code issues. So, on the surface, this method looks perfect, right? As you only need to pay the price of synchronized block only one time. So, this synchronized block will run only one time and your performance will be awesome as good as it was not at all synchronized because this block will run only once in the whole lifetime of the application. And it looks perfect, right? But still, if you can see, this code is broken. Still, multiple instances can be created even after doing all this to singleton class. Now, how it can be broken? Because you have not created your instance variable volatile. Still, your instance variable is not volatile. Now, how? what is volatile? In Java volatile keyword is used to mark a variable being stored in the memory. Now, currently, it can be a case that Multiple thread T1 and T2 create the cache in their thread from, from the main memory to the CPUs. So, multiple CPUs cores are there. Multiple threads can run on multiple CPU cores. They can create their own caches of the instance. So, I'll give you an instance how still this can be broken. T1 gets into this get instance method. Now, T1 sees if instance is null for the first time. Yes, it was null. So, it runs line number 11 and gets into the instance block, the synchronized block and says if instance is null. Yes, instance is null and hence T1 reaches here. It was about to run line number 13 of creating the new instance with a new keyword. But as soon as it was about to do that, it was the CPU was taken from T1 and given to T2. T1 has stored the state to run line number 13 and create a new singleton while keeping that state 
it it left the cpu now t2 came into picture it says in the main memory is there any instance created no it there is no instance created because any anything and everything done to that instance was in the cpu cache not in the main memory in the main memory instance is still null so t2 again gets into the synchronized block and check if it is null yes in the main memory it was null it again creates a new instance and leave the cpu by creating one new instance of singleton now t1 gets the cpu and it's it reads its last state the last state was it has just to run line number 13 and rest of its work is done so t1 runs the line number 13 and again creates a new singleton instance at that point when line number 13 is run by the t1 you will have two instances one that was created by t2 who snatched the cpu from t1 and t1 who has after getting the cpu back just ran the late latest state it was on and the latest state was at line number 13 it ran again and you have two instances for t1 and t2 it happened because t2 could not read the instance which was already half written by t1 that too in the caching so the whole whole problem was because of the caching the threads that was caching the data that can be resolved using the volatile keyword which makes sure that the data is written to the memory and read from the memory so volatile keyword makes the variable as being stored in the memory that means every read will be from the main memory and not from the cache and every write will be to the main memory and not to the cache so without a volatile modifier it was possible for another thread to see half initialized state of instance variable but volatile keyword guarantees the happen before relationship the happen before relationship came into picture only after java 1.5 so what happened before relationship says for java volatile all the write will happen before any read of the volatile keyword so first all the write will happen and then only any read will happen this is how you make a variable volatile okay so as soon as you make it volatile first all the write will be done and then only you can read it t2 was about to write a new singleton instance to this particular memory reference but t2 snatched the cpu from t1 now since t1 was about to write it now t2 cannot read this instance from the main memory and modify it because it says first all the write will happen and then only the t2 can read it so until t1 do not completely write it t2 cannot read it so all the write will happen before any read of the instance variable which is volatile this was not prior to java 1.5 so a double check locking was also broken so even before java 1.5 there was no way to prevent your singleton from breaking there are multiple ways more to prevent your singleton break using the enums and many more ways we will discuss that in the second part of this video thank you